Hello and welcome to part 13 of the Arduino BMS series. And in this part, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of an update that I'm working on with this guy, and we're going to attempt to charge my lithium battery pack using nothing but the sun. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get to our small update first, and I'll hook everything up here. So this is coming from my solar panels. I got roughly 145 watts worth of uh, solar panels out there, which is probably a bit excessive to charge a battery of this size, but See when I do that, my power supply lights up and gets ready to go. So those are our solar input and I'll connect this guy up. The first thing I'm gonna show is my small little update to this. So, kind of block the sun out so the camera can see the LCD. We now have both our charge mode and we now have a discharge mode. So if I go into that, say okay, it's going to start trying to discharge the cells through the balance resistors. So you can see that these are now kicking on and this is going to continue to run until it gets down to about three volts per cell. Right now there's still a bit of a glitch in this and that is if I leave the power supply turned on, the power supply is still trying to feed power into the battery though it shouldn't be. Now I hope that that issue is because this MOSFET isn't being turned off in the code or it's being turned back on by something else. But I'm gonna have to look into that issue later because what I wanna do now is attempt to charge this battery pack using my solar panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the voltage of our power supply up at around 13. We're gonna set the current limit to about five amps because I think I should be able to do that much power off the solar panels. We'll go ahead and stop the uh, discharge mode for now. Turn that guy on and then we'll start charging. So we're at 11.58 volts and 4.2 amps, which means that my solar panels cannot provide enough current to sustain that. More than enough to charge this battery pack still, just not as much as I was expecting. Now you may be asking, why am I not just directly connecting the BMS into the solar panels and why am I still running it through this power supply? Now the reason for that at this time is because the code will not stop charging the batteries. And of course the voltage on those solar panels, they're more than capable of continuing to put out something like 20 volts, whereas this battery pack is fully charged at around 12.6 volts. So we don't wanna be trying to shove five amps and 20 volts into the battery pack once it's already full. So I'm using the power supply to limit the voltage that can come into the battery pack to something that this can deal with. Of course, as I've mentioned in other videos, this does have safety cutoffs. So if one of the cell voltages goes above 4.25, it will turn off the incoming power to try to protect the battery pack. My concern is with the solar panels, it might have way too much current trying to come in. So in the future with this thing, I do wanna have some kind of control over the incoming power. Now, due to the way that you're supposed to charge lithium batteries with the constant current, constant voltage thing, this is probably going to have to have some kind of a buck converter on it in order to control the amount of current going into the battery pack. But that's an issue for another time. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing charge off of the solar panels, and then we're gonna go back inside and we're gonna to try to diagnose what's going on with my discharge mode. All right, so it looks like we got it about charged up around 4.22 volts per cell. And we're still pushing a bit of current in. I had to lower the voltage on this down to 12.6 because it was just pushing way too much current in when it was at 13. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and unhook this and we're gonna go take a look at my discharge code. All right, so the problem with the main power MOSFET turning on was indeed an issue in the code and I was able to solve it pretty easily. So I'll go ahead and first show you what I had to do to solve that. So when I first wrote this code, I had another variable up here which is called uh, safety trip. And of course that was used to tell whether or not something had gone wrong with the safety check portion of the code, whether it be over current or over voltage. And the main issue was the fact that I was calling this part of the code, which is void safety check. And void safety check is the only piece of this code that has the power to turn on that main power MOSFET. But the issue was I was calling void safety check in the balance part of this and balance check. So void safety check was being called within the void balance check loop. Now with the discharge mode, I don't want to run void safety check at all, but I do want to run void balance check because we want to balance discharge to the battery pack. So I have modified this code so that the void balance voltage check 
part does not call the void safety check part. And I think the original reason why I did this was because I wanted to make sure that any safety issues were caught as quickly as possible. Now apparently when I wrote this code, I wasn't thinking very hard because there's a much easier way to make sure that it goes as fast as possible. And that would be to run void safety check before running the void balance voltage check. And that's exactly what I've done up in this part of the code, which is this piece in particular. So this one is charge mode and I've called safety check before I've called balance voltage check. And that should be the fastest way possible to detect any issues that might be going on with the battery pack. As I'm sure I've shown in other videos, uh, case zero is the idle state. And the idle state is just making sure that nothing is going on with the BMS, so I'm not letting power in. And also I'm not balancing the cells, so I'm not draining them. And all it really does is sit there and uh, just takes the measurements and it dumps them to the serial and writes them to the LCD. Uh, case one is charge mode, as I've gone over before. And case two is the new discharge mode, which is essentially the same as charge mode, except for it doesn't run the safety check routine. Now, the reason why I'm not running the safety check routine in discharge mode is because it would essentially do nothing. And that's because safety check if it detects something wrong, it turns off the input power and that's really all it does. When we're discharging, we already have the input power turned off, so there's not really any point in running a check that all it could do is turn off the power. And the other issue with that is if I did run it and the safety check were to pass, which it would most of the time, that would turn the incoming power on and we don't want to have the power on when we're discharging the batteries. But anyway, the other change to this code was in the void loop. And the void loop, essentially all of this code just creates the menu system that you see in order to select the charge and discharge mode. Now some of this actually, a lot of it is unnecessary and it's kind of redundant. But anyway, I've shown this before, but I'll go ahead and kind of go through the uh, set of if statements so you can imagine what's uh, happening here and kind of hopefully get a better understanding as to how this works. So. The first thing it does is this operate command, which just runs that set of uh, switch case statements that you saw before. So the next thing it'll do is if mode equals zero, and that would be equivalent to the BMS being in an inactive state, so neither charging or discharging. After it detects that, the next if statement is if button state equals four. So the little keypad has four buttons on it which are equivalent to button states one, two, three, and four, and then button state zero would be equivalent to none of the buttons being pressed. But anyway, if you do press that specific button, it will make sure that everything is turned off, which it already should be because we're in mode zero. As I said, a lot of this is redundant, so if that button state does get pressed, it will go and make sure that everything is turned off, so that's the balance circuits and the incoming power even though it really already should be off because we're in mode zero. But anyway, that's just kind of a double check. Next thing it does is wait flag gets set equal to one, button state gets set equal to zero again. And while wait equals one, we're gonna sit there and we're going to uh, say press okay to start charging on the LCD. And we're gonna wait for any button to get pressed. Now once one of these buttons get pressed, we're going to break out of the while loop and we're going to check to see if the button state equals 1, which is what I'm calling the OK key. So if button state does equal 1, we're going to go into mode 1, which is charging mode, and we're going to set the balance valve to 4.2 volts. And of course this is the way that I have it set up now. Uh, fully charged lithium ion battery is going to be around 4.2 volts, so that's when I have the balance circuit set to kick in. Uh, and then after that we set the button state equal to 0. Now if a button was to be pressed that wasn't the OK key, we're going to check the next state, which would be to see if button number four was pressed again. And if button four is pressed again, we're gonna go into a very similar, but slightly different set of conditions, which would be making sure everything's turned off again, which again is redundant, but uh, it's in here anyway. And then this is pretty much the same thing, but it says press OK to start discharge. And then we sit there, we wait for any button to get pressed again. And if the OK key is pressed now, we go into mode two, 
we make sure that the power is turned off again. Uh, after that, it sets the balance value equal to three volts. And of course, a lithium ion battery is mostly depleted around two and a half to three volts. So I'm just running it down to three volts. And after that, set the buttons to equal to zero. These delays are just kind of in here for more or less a bit of extra debouncing. And then the last part is if at any point in time, uh, the buttons two or three get pressed, it pretty much just sends it out of this entire loop. So we set the button state back equal to zero. And then there's a 100 millisecond delay in there, again, just for a bit of extra debouncing. And then this last part is an else statement that is equivalent to if the mode does not equal zero. So for charging or discharging, it changes the function of button number four to disable both charging and discharging, whichever one is going on at the particular time. So that just sets the mode value equal to zero and it sets button state back to zero as well because we have to do that essentially every time a button gets pressed. But anyway, that's pretty much all the changes that had to be made in order to add in a discharge mode. And that pretty much concludes our update. So if you have any suggestions, comments, or questions about this project, go ahead and leave those down below. If you like the video, click on that like button. And if you want to see more about this project and other projects that I work on, click on the subscribe button down below. And that's about it for now, guys. Bye.